Hey everyone, how you doing today? Thought I would uh, do another update on this uh, Star Trek uh, ship. Um, been working on it a lot, uh, a lot of things, and uh, I'm really appreciating the comments. You made me change uh, uh, course on a, a couple of my things, and I'm really thankful for it now. Um, I, so I appreciate it. I'll go over all these uh, changes. Uh, to address some things that I left off from the last video was uh, I wanted to find a place to put a first-person cockpit on here just to have it. Um, it will have a third-person cockpit or a secure type bridge and a pocket cockpit as well. But uh, So the first-person cockpit I ended up putting here, I could kind of conceal it under some mover doors, but behind here is just some armored glass and you got a, a pilot seat going on here. Um, so that's... Uh, that is that, and uh, I don't mind it because I didn't I didn't want that window really visible. But uh, the way I can do it now is if you walk up into that room, you can have a sensor. It opens up those uh, louver doors on the outside, and um, and when you're not in that room, it's closed. Um, so that's that works. Um, it uh, it sh should work for a uh, first person view, which would be kind of neat. Um, so obviously, I've been doing some texturing, a lot of texture experimenting. Um, with this and uh, just on the top of the saucer right now and I, I looked at a whole bunch of different Star Trek ships uh, on on the internet and you know some from sh uh, shows and movies others from concept art others from uh, 3d rendered models and things that people made um, just trying to get a ballpark idea on uh, things that fluctuate on them and you know design elements that maybe could work better in Imperium versus other things to add detail. So basically I came to the conclusion that some Star, uh, Star Trek ships are whiter and some are grayer. Um, it, it depends on the model. Um, some have um, some like uh, red uh, like lines like this and others don't. Um, some have red glowies, some have uh, gr uh, blue glowies, some have both red and blue glowies. Uh, so I, and the, there's a lot of fluctuation there. Um, so I was just trying to take different elements and kind of mishmash it all together um, to see what I could come up with and a, a lot of experimentation on it. Um, so in comments too, it was suggested that I uh, use different uh, tones to try to separate panels on the, on, on the, uh, the ship. I've been doing that. Excellent idea, by the way. Um, so you can kind of see some fluctuation in colored panels here, but I'm also combining that with uh, the base metal texture and the smooth textures, but I'm being really, really extra picky more than I would on the uh, normal builds that I do. And just to show you that process real quick and the colors in the palette here, let me turn on symmetry and I'll just do a very, very small portion here a second. Um, so my process is to first turn on symmetry when I'm painting. I'll go to this base metal texture here, and obviously it's got a lot of these little jiggy lines and things in it. Um, and then over on this side here, I've got, uh, this is my base hull color here. This is a, a very slight tone up, and this is a very slight tone down. So I'll set it to the base hull material with that, and I'll spray up a little section. And I'm just going to do this in a very small area here uh, right now. And then after that's done, you have to turn symmetry back off again because it's going to be different on the other side. And then I'm uh, relentlessly removing all lines uh, except for unless they're in a uh, perfect square. So basically anything that's got any kind of jiggy line on it at all. And then even beyond that, sometimes I'll just get rid of some other ones anyway just, just, just to get just a little bit of this going on. Um, it, it adds that fine detail la layer I want but you know if like you like this area it might have a little bit too many of these so maybe I'll take like get rid of that one or something like that so then it, you just see a little bit of the of these panel line work things going on and then you have to manually go over to the other side and do that same process here because it's all different um, so it takes a little bit of time it's not hard there's nothing hard about it it's just it's just a it's a bit time-consuming um, so then after that's done, I'll turn symmetry back on and then go through and use these alt colors here um, and maybe paint a couple. It's barely noticeable and I can uh, adjust the intensity of these uh, colors here and uh, if you want them to stick out a little bit more. Um, and so it was like one tone up, one tone down um, over here. So maybe I wanted to paint. Oh, oh. I screwed up though. I meant to set this to no texture because I was just blotting out the actual textures I wanted to keep. 
Um, so and I'll put that back. So yeah, I meant to, uh, it, w w when you do this part, you want to make sure that you're not painting uh, new textures over it, basically. Um, and that's kind of what I've been doing for the base, base hall material. Um, now, I made it a little more complicated on the, uh, the saucer, um, and maybe for no reason at all. Um, but if you notice over here, I got another three colors. Um, and it's the same thing that's going on here. This is the uh, a base color, and this is one tone up, and this is one tone down from this color. And what I did is I painted the upper uh, area of this uh, uh, saucer with uh, these, and then I'm painting the lower area, or this base level down here, with this. And these are just slightly darker than the other ones. Um, it's not very noticeable, but... I'm trying to add a little contrast to it, um, but I don't even know, you know, you, you might be able to tell if you look close enough that it's a little bit darker there. And then some other features are uh, using uh, 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 these these grays over here, which are a little bit toned down from where these leave off at. And then I've got another set over here for darker parts and things. Um, so it's using a lot of a lot of grays. Um, this is my uh, the the accent color or those, those red lines and i've been uh, constantly changing and playing with the color of this too i definitely want it kind of washed out looking um and i'm just trying to find like the right color um this is pretty close right now uh to what i was liking but i mean it could go browner it could go redder it could go a lot of different ways and it doesn't even have to be there i have been uh toying with like i moved this one like three times up here i do like the back the back one the way that's working out i think that for some reason looks nice um this one's all right um i don't mind i kind of like how it's going over these little vent things in there to kind of break it up a little bit uh so yeah just a lot of experimentation and playing around with um painting this thing and i wanted to kind of get this down and like this area before i like move on to the rest of the ship um short of i painted a little bit on the the sides of the nacelles just to see what that black line there would look like and then on the outside over here, sensors uh, naturally Xeno um, behind all this stuff here. Um, uh, yeah, I got. Uh, yeah, let's just fix that. Hate to miss it. <laughs> all right. Um, so yeah, a little glowy behind some things. Uh, I'm trying to make the the nacelles a little bit uh, glowyish in places and stuff like that. So again, a lot of trial and error, a lot of experimenting. Trying to figure out, you know, how I, how I can get this thing to look. Here, so let me turn off symmetry again. A couple other little things. You might notice the little blinkies. Uh, they're very discreet, but uh, Star Trek ships typically have little blinkies like that. And so as I got a, a few placed around here. And then over where I intend on making the, uh, the name, like the MC whatever, blah, 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 model number across the top are rounded letters. Uh, using individual like letter LCDs to project them at, or, or maybe one one or two LCDs to put them all in place um, around there. Uh, but I also put in a little light here. It's uh, I got a lot of light and space here right now, so you don't see it as much. But um, to kind of illuminate that, like uh, you'd see on a lot of Star Trek ships, I didn't have very good options on where I was going to place the light um, to get it to impact this area. So I kind of put it there. Um, anyway, so that's that. Um, okay, so now talking power. Uh, there's a lot of comments talking about uh, I really should be putting in a fusion reactor. And my mindset was, uh, well, I got enough power for what I need and blah, 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 and I'll just use large generators. And um, Well, you guys are absolutely right. Uh, I, 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 uh, you explained it good, and I'm glad you did because I would have screwed up there. I would have, I would have screwed up. I would have went old school and put in the, uh, the advanced generators. To break this down, fusion reactor is a really big part to place, but um, it does 500 kilowatts, takes 400,000 CPU, and has a perk to it that uh, uh, increases your shield recharge by 200. I don't even know exactly what that means, but I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's good. It's, I'm sure it's better than not recharging your shield. By 200, um, and then a uh, standard uh, reforge even advanced generator, 150,000 CPU, um, and it makes 95 kilowatts. So this does 500. This does 95. So you need a little more than five of these to equal one of these. Um, I, I thought the ratio was different too. So uh, and if you if you were to add up the the CPU total of like five of these, even it's way more than what this is. 
um, and plus this has the perks. So yeah, it's going to save CPU. Um, one thing I was not taking into account for is like uh, all these different shield parts and like end game warp drive and all these things that take a, a huge amount of power. Um, so I was just building for the uh, the ship for what it would maybe come with stock, but um, or maybe not even enough um, with the shield rechargers and stuff. And yeah, this is a much much better option. So. Yeah, I, uh, I had to find a place to put it, and my uh, solution was putting it here. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of like in the middle, uh, back middle section of the uh, the saucer. Uh, I had enough room. I did have a turret uh, formerly over this area, but I removed that because I absolutely did not want a turret touching this thing. If this thing goes, you're going to be in trouble. That's all I got to say. <laughs> If, if, if this gets popped, uh, you're going to be in a world of hurt. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'm going to try to protect this nicely inside of here, too. So um, so I put some Xeno there and covered the Xeno up with other blocks. Um, so that's there. Something else I wanted when playing in uh, Reforged Eden in my current playthrough, which I want to do a little bit today. It's been a, a couple days. I've been so focused on this ship when I had time that I haven't been on there much. But... Um, I plastered solar panels all over the, uh, the the Janus module I'm using right now, and that really helps. I mean, when I'm on, offline, the ship uh, is never going to run out of power. It'll, you know, it's not flying around, and I kind of got a power saving mode on it. Um, it keeps my food in the fridge cold uh, and not spoiled. If I had farms and enough O2 in the ship, they would stay going. So I really like the idea of having solar panels in the ship. It's, it's nice. Um, so I wanted the ship to also have that capability. So what I uh, did here, um, in the uh, outer por portions of the saucer, I've, I've, I've uh, been reinforcing it with a lot more Xeno. Um, and I got a question about that too. But... Uh, I got uh, basically 20 large solar panels kind of wrapped around portions of the outer saucer. Now, this this area where I'm putting these things wasn't very usable for anything um, short of, like, maybe fluff crew rooms and things or maybe some fuel and um, oxygen storage because it had really low ceilings and stuff, like, all over the place. So I'm thinking... What my plan is right now is I would like to have the solar panels. Um, and I got 20 here, and I actually got four small ones um, built into the uh, the nacelles in the back, too. So there's 24 solar panels on the ship total, just four of them are the small ones. Um, is maybe I could, uh, you know, I could leave them or uh, even remove them and have you place them, but maybe kind of wall this off, trying to make it as pretty as possible around the outer edges. And, uh, you know... Say say there was a vanilla conversion of this ship um, or something like that, and you wouldn't have these solar panels in here, then this space could also serve as like a crew room area on the sides. And, I, and I'm kind of planning on having like a hallway that sort of wraps around uh, through here and kind of around this section. Um, I, now, other big parts. I got to place a shield. I got to place a warp drive. And I got all those shield parts and other things. Um, so some of the areas I was planning on putting those in right now is kind of like these uh, spaces over alongside. Now, the secure bridge, I believe, is going to be here. Um, it might even be recessed in the, uh, the floor a little bit. I'm not sure yet. Um, and this will be like a single floor back area back here because I got, you know, the parts and the uh, kind of like the pseudo engineering stuff in here. And then um, when you get closer to this area here, it's going to have uh, two floors and that on one of those floors obviously connects to the uh, the first person bridge over there. So I think that is how the layout is going to sort of go there. That leaves a lot of open room kind of in the center, which I'm not really planning on having a bridge here of any type because I kind of want the uh, the secure bridge further back um, in the ship than where this is. Um, and then uh, also I'd like to have in a, uh, a farm. Maybe that'll go here. Um, uh, and it's not going to be a big farm. I'm thinking either 18 or 36 grow plots. Um, so it's not going to it's not going to try to go crazy with the with the farm. I do have a question about um, the uh, padding, the xeno padding on the front of the ship, though. Now, obviously, um, covering a couple different types of uh, main types of uh, combat ships in the game, 
is there's a couple of mindsets. Uh, one is uh, you're fast man maneuverable. Uh, try to avoid a lot of the hits by you know being quick and uh, and hit and hitting the bad guy and uh, you know using your shield and trying to take the most most of the damage that you do take on your shield and then kind of like backing off battle, let it recharge, rinse and repeat if necessary. Um, or the other mindset of like brute force, I've got more blocks than you, I'm going to win. <laughs> you know, so the, 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 there's two different uh, ways of looking at it. Um, obviously, the more blocks you add, the heavier it gets, so the slower it gets. Um, so what I'm thinking is I got uh, some layers here. Um, it's not super deep. I guess if you if you look at it from like the, the very front block, you got like one hardened steel block, you got a Xeno leg shot block, some fill Xeno, this might... Uh, changed um, so about five layers at the very front and it thins off uh, a little bit more as you go further down the saucer um, and it actually gets to a point of about one block um, on that um, and and then also more xeno reinforcing obviously in this section and there'll be some up along the uh, the neck portion here too um, but is that enough xeno is that enough protection um, again, with the intent of being fast and maneuverable and not trying to like, you know, tank something, you know what I mean? Um, uh, it's not really the style. I mean, the ship's pretty fast. I think it can pull off the, uh, the maneuverability thing to try to miss getting a lot of the hits taken to it. So yeah, is, is that enough Xeno? Um, or should I, uh, add in more? I got room to add in more. I mean, it, it can be done. It's just, you know, I'm trying to preserve as much space as I can. So other uh, things that uh, will be in here, um, uh, storage um, I'm thinking about and production. Um, now, typically on most ships, I end up uh, putting uh, production on the sides of the hangar. Uh, in this case, the hangar is really thin. So I can't really pull off putting constructors on the side here unless I'm going to block the, uh, the hangar space. So what I'm thinking about doing is uh, actually I got some space in this location. I'll uh, back, the, uh, back up these artillery guns with more Xeno blocks, but um, probably have a production area around this location here. And not to mention this is there's also a way going off the back to the, uh, the landing pad from here. So there'll be a floor and then production. And I'm thinking... Right now, and um, two 320k uh, ammo bays and uh, four to six um, 320k standard storage bays. Uh, as in constructors, I'm thinking about um, two to four advanced constructors and four small constructors. And I, honestly, what I'd like to achieve is um, three advanced constructors, one deconstructor, and four small constructors in a little set kind of thing. Um, plus, you know, your other utility stuff, your fridges and your armor lockers and whatever. Um, it'll have a med bay uh, in the ship, too. Maybe I'll try to get some of those uh, components right along the hangar or somewhere convenient. If not, um, maybe another room or maybe in two places. Uh, so all those can be done. Uh, so that, that's the idea I got going on there. Just let me know if you think that feels about right um, for storage and stuff and ammo storage. I know some of these battles could go on a long time and you really want to be stocked on ammo. And this thing's got some big artillery guns that really suck up ammo storage. So maybe two is not enough. That, that's kind of my thinking there. Shield parts and things like that. Yeah, kind of laying across here. Uh, probably the farm over here uh, somewhere. Not a big farm again. Um, probably some kind of a hallway that runs along here. Kind of angles around um and where these solar panels go i'll try to you know make it prettier and uh, uh maybe you know if you're if you don't want the solar panels you could remove them and they, they could double as like crew rooms or something you know some something fluff um and there is one other one there is one fluff room i really do want to add to here and it doesn't have to be really big or anything like that um but i played with it on the persis uh, uh, CV3. Um, it's uh, in this case, it would be just called a holodeck, um, and the, I called it a hull chamber, I think, in this ship. But uh, let me find it. Yeah, um, hollow chamber. So yeah, this was my first first run. This is obviously a straight up fluff room here, but um, it was fun. 
I got some new ideas on a way to do a hollow chamber a little bit different than what this one was done, and I was kind of wanted to put in something like that in the uh, the Star Trek ship because it's it's really fitting, you know, it just really is fitting, um, and of course it's going to have a teleporter as well. Um, you know, it'd be kind of if you could put in a bunch of teleporters, you could have your teleporter room, you know. But um, so it's going to have that. Those are just a couple throwbacks to uh, the uh, Star Wars franchise. That it's just I'm really going to want to find space to put a couple of those things in here, just just to say I did. But uh, it's not going to have much in fluff rooms. Um, I'll see how this uh, this area works out in the end. You know, with with space and you know maybe I can get some more crew places in than I'm thinking I could right now or little things, but there's a lot of real, I mean, actually, actually gameplay parts I need to be popping in this thing, and uh, um, that's going to take a lot of space, and it's not that big of a ship um, with, with, with space. Um, unusually shaped ship, for sure. I did, uh, beyond getting a couple small solar panels and uh, the nacelles, basically, uh, I got to fix up this theory, too. I don't like my block work here. Uh, but uh, I did, uh, yeah, uh, where are they? Yeah, there's a couple small solar panels. I also managed to get in a couple of uh, uh, fuel tanks. Um, and everything, uh, like the fuel tanks, are separated from themselves and separated from the, the thrusters and separated from the solar panels. And there's always this xeno block barrier between all the parts on this ship, pretty much. Um, and that's just kind of the standard being the, uh, the combat role that it is. Uh, you don't want chain reaction explosions and things happening. Um, so I'm just trying to avoid doing that. And all these thrusters are separated by layers of Xeno blocks and there's a zero layer of Xeno blocks in a lot of areas on the inside, um, beyond like either carbon substrate in some cases or, uh, hardened steel. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at. That's kind of like the features. I think everything's going to work out. I think I'm going to have room for everything. Um, I, I, I really like the advice, uh, on, you know, the, the, the painting technique, um, and of course, uh, people recommending that I heavily uh, check into the uh, the fusion reactor. I'm glad I did. I would have made I would have made a, a bad mistake there um, if I would have just not you know not asked and and people didn't tell me. I would have ran with what I knew, and that would have that would have kind of sucked later on in game when you had no place to add a fusion reactor uh, because I you know I would have had a room made for it and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, the solar panel idea, that was just a thing. You know, I was cringing at the idea of adding solar panels to this, but luckily enough, you don't have to have them visible. Um, and the space I'm putting them in isn't very good space anyway So um, for, like, usable things in the ship. So it's it, can, it should look reasonably nice um, still on the inside, despite smacking in all that other stuff. Uh, but that that's where I'm at. I just kind of get, get get a rundown on it and just, you know, see if you guys got any thoughts or comments or anything. Um, and, and, you know, I look forward to them. Uh, you, you're helping me here. <laughs> Definitely helping me. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Um, last thing I wanted to uh, do is uh, just do a little bit of complaining because it's going to affect this ship a lot and unless I can get uh, the devs to... Uh, address an issue here so the issue has to do with lcds that's been ongoing for quite a long time now ever since they patched the game a while back um as an example of that let's go in the persis uh, hangar and i'll show you exactly what's going on i'm sure you all know about it anyway but the lcd you see what's going on here it, it draws them and it, it removes the text from all the lcds but it keeps like the graphics and it's basically eight blocks away i even measured it yeah, that's how annoyed I am with this issue. Um, it, it's basically a, probably an opti optimization to remove this physical part from the world when you're that distance away, but uh, the bug is also removing the text from LCDs, but it keeps everything else going on um, at a distance of uh, right about eight blocks, um, and which is really, really, really annoying and will totally trash the idea of naming the ship on the front of... Um, the uh, this ship uh, with the LCD idea I've got because you couldn't see it unless you were on top of it, um, and that and that just won't work. I got to use words here. I got to use letters. If I could just make everything with symbols, then it would work. But yeah, I got to actually use letters, and they're gonna disappear if you're like this far away, which is really gonna suck, and and totally 
really defeat that whole idea. And so I want them to fix it. And uh, so I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to, like every video, I swear, I'm going to just keep on nagging and nagging about the same thing over and over and over again until it's fixed. And I'll keep on adding to the list just to be a jerk, um, like this piece here that needs to be fixed very, very badly too. And uh, if we're, if we're going to run it, um, let's also uh, take a look at the blast doors and how a player can't shoot through an open blast door, but the AI can. Um, that's another uh, problem you really need to address. So yeah, those are the, 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 three, uh, the three like really really annoying bugs right now um, that uh, really, really need to be uh, looked at. Um, um, so I just wanted to make mention of that uh, at the end of the video, and that's where I'm at. And so please let, let, let me know anything. Uh, if you got any other ideas or anything like that, uh, let me know. I'm gonna, uh, now's the time, because I'm really, uh, at this point in time, once I lay out some more parts and like the, the, the shield and the warp drive and the, the shield parts and figure out which ones I'm putting in, um, after that, it's going to be pretty finalized, I think, um, with the layout, and I'm not going to have much more room to uh, to manipulate things, I guess you could say. So, all right. Well, anyway, y'all have yourself a great day, and I will uh, talk to you later.